Hey there friends, welcome to another video from VIP Brigade. I'm Justin, the creator and founder of VIP Brigade. I'm coming to you again from Branson, Missouri. It's a beautiful night here in the Ozark Mountains. It's about midnight and once again I am on my back porch. So if you hear crickets and frogs and maybe even the occasional car drive by in the distance, that's because I am outside doing this voiceover. This time around, we're gonna be focusing on three different letters from the VIP Brigade acronym. We have G for gaming, D for DIY, and the E for electronics. As you noticed in the thumbnail and the title, this is a video about an arcade machine that I built from scratch. So it's a bit of a crossover video pertaining to multiple different subjects. This isn't strictly a DIY as I don't have video footage of this build. This is more of a progress video showing my different steps that I went through. However, I did go through and find stock photos of anything I could and put links in the description. There's probably about 20 different links of products that you can check out from tools that I used to even products that I bought that might be hard to find. Uh, and if they're not hard to find, I can vouch that they're that they're good products. So before I get into the actual build, I'm going to let you see a little preview of the machine running the front end startup from LaunchBox. There's also a link to that in the description. So without further ado, here's my arcade machine. So here's what I call a poor man's table saw. I don't have a table saw, so I clamp down straight edges, use my caliper to measure the distance from the edge to the blade of my circular saw so I could get nice clean lines that didn't have huge gaps. Tolerance was very important. Here is the side pieces. They didn't end up being identical, so I clamped them together and sanded them till they were and just built from there. I put the taller marquee on there. This did start out as a set of plans, those plans were wrong. I had to fix so much stuff. So basically once I got the side pieces done, all these pieces you see lined up, so many of them were wrong and I just kind of had to build as I went. Here's some backing blocks that are used to butt up the side pieces, the bottom pieces. I used a brad nailer to hold them in place while the glue dried. Here you can see me squaring it up, going piece by piece. Here's the bottom being clamped on. Now I'm working on the control panel area. I'll try to keep up with these pictures best I can. Here's a picture of the marquee coming together. Again, I wanted a really tall in your face marquee, not the real small one that came in the plans. Here's the slot for the T molding. And then I'm gonna show you the tool I use. These are slot cutters. Be careful, these have speed warnings. Make sure they match your router. I don't want any of you guys getting hurt. These can be dangerous, so just check that out. Here we are back to putting the speaker box, marquee box combo kind of together. You can see I've just clamped them in place, lining things up. Again, there's a reason these plans aren't in the, in the description because I had a lot of issues with them. But moving on, here is a piano hinge that I used. So my control panel, where the buttons and joysticks are, could raise up and I could work on that. Here's a picture of it raised up. I had to mess with this a lot. It was it was difficult, but I got it. Here are the speakers that I used, part of the speakers. I also had an old speaker bar, cheap one. I don't remember what it was, but this would suffice. You can see I start taking them apart. Here's the subwoofer side of things. I just tore things down. Here's the speaker from the actual sub box. I took the electronics out and gutted it as best as possible took off all any plastic trim. Here's everything, including the old speaker bar. I think it was a Bluetooth iLive. You can get them for 20 or 30 bucks. I had three or four, so I just gutted the speakers out of it. Here I'm laying it out across the panel. Took my caliper and just sort of made some scratches in there so I could use my hole saw later. 
Here's my circles that I used, uh, excuse me, that I drew using a compass. Cut them out, and then I outlined the edge of the speaker so I could put it under my router and countersink the speakers so they would be flush. There's a test fit inside of the cabinet, just kind of sort of compressed fit being clamped in there, pressure fitted. Here I've mounted the speakers. Didn't have a lot of wire wit to work with there, but here is where I'm separating the chambers. The middle is more subwoofer. The outsides are more the highs and mid speakers. Probably not completely necessary, but I did it because this thing really does put out some amazing volume. It can actually just be used as a speaker system. Here's where I trimmed everything down. Here's the electronic side of things. I still had more work to do here. I took all the plastic stuff off. There's where I cut the power wire. I think I had to cut just a few things and then wire it back together. Here I drilled a hole through a non-critical part of the PCB so I could bolt it down. Just more pieces of the electronics here. Here's where I was test fitting, mounting it to the top of the speaker enclosure. Now here I'm soldering my wires and heat shrink tubing everything nicely inside. Here I'm heat shrink tubing the electrical wires. They will run down the back of the arcade down to where I put my power strip. Here's a back view before I put the back on. The front is angled, the back is straight. That's why I built it that way to get as much airspace as possible. Again, probably doesn't make that much of a difference. We're not talking about 12 or 15 inch subwoofers here, but it really does sound amazing. Here's the back access panel I put on. Here's everything mounted and done. I did hot glue one piece. I don't usually like using hot glue, but I did for this instance. And there's a back that I put on that can also be removed. Everything about this can be removed and serviced. It was a little bit more planning, but it was worth it. Here's some templates. I don't remember where I got these, but a quick Google search would help you out for your button layouts. I just put some adhesive spray glue down, used my hole saw, drilled through those and sanded them. Now, here are the threaded inserts, or sometimes they're called nut certs. Those are in the description as well. This is so I could mount the joystick from underneath without having to use wood screws, which could come out on you, or having to run a bolt all the way through. This is HAP joysticks and buttons that I personally use. There's a link in the description as well. Here's my first attempt at a layout. It did change over time, but you can see I drew a little rectangle in there. That's with the lid, the control panel down. There's my wife helping me prime with an oil-based primer from Kills. It's really good for the MDF because you don't want it to swell. You need it to seal. Here's the front door. That is a cylinder lock. You can find those anywhere. These hinges, however, are a must in my opinion. There's a link in the description for those. Here it is with a nice, probably two to three coats of the primer on it. A few more test fits. Nothing permanent yet. You can see I have a block in there for the screen. Here is where I took my monitor housing, did a rough tracing, and then cut it out. And as I did this, I just built around the screen. Here's the back. And to bolt it, it had these little tiny wall mount screws. I didn't like those. I wanted a bolt of this size. So I ripped out those little threaded inserts there. And I soldered, I think these were 3 8 nuts there. Uh, soldered those in and got me some big bolts in there. To really hold this thing in place. Here's where I drilled the back of the panel out of the plastic so the nuts could come through. A little bit more work here on the bracket. Lined up the holes so now I can remove that screen if I need to. There's some spacers so there's not any pressure on any critical points bending the screen. And there it is. It fits like a glove. It's mounted in nicely. Again, there's really no science to this. I just had to build it as I, as I went. Uh, I wouldn't be able to really give plans on this if I wanted to. Here you can see I drilled some holes on the side for pinball. Here's the cooling fan. This is for the entire box. It hooks into the computer. This is a PC-based arcade machine. So when the computer turns on, the fan turns on. Keeps everything nice and cool. Here's one of the first test runs here. 
checking a game out, maybe assigning some buttons and joysticks. Here's another shot of the side where I put buttons for pinball, which you can see later on. Now some of the leads from the uh, buttons to the encoders, they were too short, so I had to lengthen them. Here's a black coat of paint. There's the cooling fan mounted. Now here is the control panel. This is heat transfer vinyl. I ironed it on, on the top. Here's a picture of it. The Sizer brand is what I used. Next, these cheap little poster frames. We've all used them probably at one time or another. The black outside edge is what I used. You can see the trim that goes over the top of the control panel there. So really kind of tidied everything up there. This is the coin door, not great quality. I had to do some work to it, repaint it, but it worked. Here's the 25 cent coin buttons that make everything feel legitimate. I have this machine set up to where you have to push those buttons before you can play any arcade game. Here is the USB encoder that is used to tell the computer what you're pushing in the buttons or the HAP joystick. Here's after I've got everything kind of tidied up. There's a close up. And then it might seem like we're going backwards sometimes, but I was test fitting things. Here's just getting all my wires ran from the monitor and the speaker set up. Now here's my screen bezel. I used a plastic corrugated poster board, very cheap, and it looked nice. Trim it out and then see the black edging there? You can get this at the auto parts store for your car. It goes on the edge of your door. And when you put them both together, for about 10 bucks, you end up with a screen bezel that looks like this. I always use things like this, kind of think outside of the box. Now this is me just putting a darker blue. I didn't want to go black. Um, by the time I put this black mesh over it, it really kind of matched the machine with the dark blue and the black. Here's kind of everything lined out together, the screen with the bezel, which can be removed. Another shot here of some more buttons. And here we go with the screen actually mounted, getting everything sort of test fitted. Here's you another shot before the coin door was added. And here's after it was added. I'm testing out some pinball there. And here's those 25 cent buttons wired up so they, the LED kicks in. And here it is mounted to the door. I ran the wires as nicely as I could. They stay out of the way. Here's the computer and the little power strip. It's a Windows 10 PC. Now, here is some dowel rods that I used to hold the marquee in place. Here's the marquee. I got it from a very good website. Check it out, there's a link in the description. And here's the final product that was pretty much finished. Here's a close-up of the T-molding. I also put a link in the description to that website as well. And here's the buttons on the side for the pinball flippers and the pinball nudge. Here's a nice close-up of the homemade trim that I made from the black frame from the cheap poster board there. Here's another look under the hood there. This is after everything was completed, all buttons, all joysticks, everything ran and assigned. Easy access there for replacement or repair. Here's a list of games, working games uh, so far. You go down and I'll give you a little preview of the Pac-Man here. There it is in the standby mode. Just running through the motions. There's a little bit of a Galaga preview. You push the buttons for credit. Look at the bottom there, you can see eight credits have been added. Just some more shots of the machine here. This is uh, the Williams Pinball Pack on Steam. I highly recommend Steam. At least for your pinball needs. Here's a launch button. I had to add a launch button. Make it feel as real as possible for pinball. Because this is not a real machine, there's the flipper button. The blue there that I'm pushing, that is a nudge button. So the way it works is you can use your ring finger middle finger for the flippers and your pinky for the nudge that was a night shot there of it in the dark 
I will put those LED strips in the description to light up the marquee. And here's Defender. If you're familiar with the Defender game, that's what the whole arcade is based upon, even the marquee. It's one of my favorite arcade games of all time, so I thought I would just use it as my starting point and base an entire machine off of it. And that wraps up this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. We finished up just in time. Uh, lucky for me, I have a big umbrella over my back porch because it has started to rain here in the Ozarks. If you have any questions at all, please ask them. I will answer them as quickly as possible and at the best of my ability and try to help you guys out if you have any questions. I do work a day job and then every night, seven nights a week, I do play music on stage. That's usually the reason for my late night voiceovers. So check out the description again, because there will be plenty of links there for all these items and products and tools. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends, and uh, be on the lookout for more videos. As I said before, VIP Brigade is an acronym that stands for a lot of different things that I enjoy and that are hobbies of mine. So stay tuned for more videos. I really appreciate you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.